Today we're going to talk about balancing equations. So our goal for balancing chemical equations is to get the same number of atoms of each element on both sides. So you need the same number of hydrogens on the left as on the right, for example. And when we balance chemical equations, we use coefficients. Coefficients are your big number in front of the compound. This is what you add. So when you did the index card activity, you added coefficients, those big numbers. And you want to make sure you know the difference between coefficients and subscripts. Coefficients are your big number in front. Subscripts are the little numbers after. And when balancing a chemical equation, you can only change the coefficients. You cannot change the subscripts. The subscripts are there due to the charge. When you made sure charge is equal to zero, that's how you get the subscripts. You can't change those when you're balancing a chemical equation. You can only add your coefficients. So you can only add the large numbers, not these small twos after. And for instance, that would be like changing H2O, say you need two oxygens, that would be the difference between making H2O2 versus two H2Os. That's a big difference. So some helpful hints while you balance chemical equations. First thing you want to do is begin with atoms that are found only once. So if you only have one sodium on both on one side and two sodiums on the other, that's only found once in the equation. You'll start with that. You always want to make sure that you balance oxygen last. Sometimes oxygen can be kind of tricky, so you want to save it for the end. Whenever you do a combustion reaction, you want to go carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. Balance your carbons, balance your hydrogens, and then balance your oxygens. If you get stuck with an odd number, let's say you have two oxygens on one side and on the other side you have three. You want to double everything. You want to make that odd number into an even number so that you can balance. Something that will help when you're balancing. If you have a polyatomic ion on both sides, you have SO4 on the left, SO4 on the right, balance it as a single unit. Okay, Balance it based on your number of SO4s. Don't treat the atoms individually. That will make it more uh, complicated than it needs to be. And then at the end, double check. Make sure all of your atoms are balanced. Maybe you had to add a coefficient to one side and you forgot to balance on the other. So make sure you double check. Spend that extra minute to make sure that your equation is balanced. And then at the end, if you can reduce your coefficients, if all of your numbers are even and you can reduce make sure to do that. Okay, Just like empirical formulas, you want your simplest coefficients. So we're going to look at some examples with balancing chemical equations. You might already get how to balance chemical equations. You only need to see a couple examples. Um, if you need to see more than a couple, that's totally fine too. Balancing chemical equations takes a ton of practice. So we're going to look at this first example. We have Al plus O2 yields Al2O3. So I'm going to start with aluminum because I want to save oxygen for the end. So on the reactant side, I have one aluminum. On the product side, on the right side, I have two aluminums, okay, because my subscript is a two. So in order to balance this out, I need two aluminums over here. So now I have two on the reactants, two on the products. Okay, now notice on the reactant side, now I have two oxygens, and on the product side I have three. Well, if you think back to those helpful hints that I gave you, I said if we have an odd number, you want to double it. So that means I'm actually going to double my odd number of oxygens. So if I put a two in front of it now, that's going to change my oxygens to six, but now it's going to change my number of aluminums to 4. Reason being is you want to multiply 2 for the coefficient times 2 which is the subscript gives us 4. So now let's go back and look on the reactant side because now I need to go back and fix my coefficients. If I take a look first at aluminums I have 4 on the products, 4 on the right side I have 2 right now. So I'm gonna make sure I get my eraser. You want to use a pencil while you go through 
and balance equations. Now I have 4 on the products, which means I need a 4 on the reactants. So now I have 4 aluminums on both sides. Those are balanced. Now I'm going to look at my oxygens. I have 2 on the left, 6 on the right. Okay, so if you think, what do I need to multiply by 2 to get to 6? That would be a 3. Okay, so I have 4, 3, 2. Those are my coefficients. I can go back through, double check, make sure everything is balanced. They are. I'm good. I can move on to the next. And so now if we look at the second example. We have sodium plus water yields sodium hydroxide and hydrogen. And so we're going to look at this, and I look at sodium first. So when I look at sodium, on the left side, I have one. One sodium. On the right side, I have one. That's balanced. Now notice on the left side, I have water, and on the right, I have hydroxide and hydrogen. If you think back when we did um, single and double replacement, I told you if you have water on one side, and hydroxide and hydrogen on the other, you can change it to HOH. So you have hydrogen and hydroxide. So let's take a look at hydrogen. I have one hydrogen on the left side, one hydrogen, I have two on the right. Well, to balance that out, I'm going to need a two here. Okay, so I have two hydrogens now on both sides. Now, if I look at hydroxide as a single unit, I have two of them. So to balance that, I need a two on the right side. Now, this is where you want to double check because notice now this changes my number of sodiums. I now have two sodiums. So I'm going to come back over onto the left, make sure I get two sodiums. And so that is how you would go through and you would balance. So I have two, 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 and just one. Notice when there's nothing there, it's assumed to be 1. Now we're going to look at one combustion example. So remember, you know that it's combustion when you see a hydrocarbon plus oxygen and you always get CO2 plus H2O. That's always your product, CO2 and H2O, when you have a combustion reaction. Now, I'm going to give you a helpful hint. A little trick when you're doing a combustion reaction. Whenever you see combustion, you see your hydrocarbon, your CH compound, double that. Just put a 2 in front of it to start. This is going to actually help your balancing proceed much easier than if you just start with 1. Okay, so always put a 2 in front of it, and then we can look back at the end and see if we can reduce. So I'm going to start with a 2 in front of that hydrocarbon. Now I'm going to figure out how many carbons I have. So on the left side, 2 times 7 is 14. On the right side, on my products, right now I only have 1, which means I can put a 14 in front of that to balance my carbons. So after I go through carbons, I'm going to next proceed to hydrogen. On the left side, I have 2 times 16. I have 32. So what you need to look at on the right side is just ask yourself, what do I need to multiply 2 by to get to 32? So we need to multiply by 16. So I'm going to multiply my water by 16 so that I get 32 hydrogens. Now go back and do your oxygens. So notice on the left side, on my reactants, I only have 2. On the right side, on my products, you want to make sure to add up your total number of oxygens. So with CO2, I have 28 oxygens plus your number of oxygens in your water. You have 16, which means I have a total of 44 oxygens. So now I'm going to look and see what do I need to multiply my O2 by to get to 44. I need to multiply that by 22. Now if you take a look at this example, hopefully you notice something about every coefficient. Hopefully you notice that you can divide each one of those by 2. And when you can divide each one by 2, you should do that. So that's going to reduce to 1, 
to 11, to 7, and to 8. So you end with 1, 11, 7, 8. And notice I'm actually going through this work, crossing it out so that you can see what I'm doing. When you're actually balancing, you want to use your eraser and you want to erase your coefficients. So when it, I can cancel them out, I'm going to erase the ones that I had before. And then I end with the ones that I got by reducing. And so that's a trick for combustion. So I want you to try this combustion reaction and see what coefficients you get. And then we'll move on to the next reaction. So hopefully for that combustion reaction, you got 2, 15, 12, and 6. Um, notice I can't reduce, I can't divide 15 by 2. So those are going to be my coefficients for that combustion reaction. So now we're going to look at this next one. I actually color coded it so that way it helps us a little more. Notice that with both of the reactants and both of the products, I have polyatomic ions. So when I'm going through looking at polyatomic ions, I want to treat them as one thing. So that means I want to treat PO4 as one unit. I want to treat carbonate, CO3 as one unit. That's going to help me in my balancing. And so what we're going to look at is we are going to look at our reactants first. So I have sodium phosphate, Na3PO4, plus calcium carbonate, CaCO3. So I'm going to count my sodiums. So on my reactant side, I have three. On my product side, I have two. Okay, well notice I have an odd number. So I want to double that. So I'm going to put a two in front of that, which then gives me six sodiums. And so to get to six on my product side, I'm going to need a three. So now my sodiums are balanced. Well, let's move over to my phosphates now. On the reactant side, on the left, I have two times one, because I have one PO4. Notice it's not in parentheses, there's no subscript, so I have one PO4 unit. Well, when I have one of those times two, which is my coefficient, I have two PO4s. Notice on my product side, I have two PO4s. So phosphate is balanced. Let's take a look at calcium carbonate. I have one calcium on my reactant side. I have three on my products. So one to three, that means I need a three in front of calcium carbonate on my reactant side, and now I'm balanced. So I have three calciums. Now let's look at carbonates. I have one carbonate times three for my coefficient on my reactant side, so I have three total. Well, if you take a look on my product side, I have one here times three, which is the coefficient, I have three. So now my equation is balanced. I have two Na3PO4, I have three calcium carbonates, and that yields three calcium, sorry, one calcium phosphate and three sodium carbonates. And so that's how you go through ones with polyatomic ions. So what I want you to try to do now is you're going to combine what you've learned so far, and I want you to look at this bottom example. I want you to predict your products and then balance the equation. So if you take a look at um, what I got for predicting products and balancing, see if you got the same thing. Remember, whenever you form a new compound, you need to make sure you take into account their charges. So that's why down here I got aluminum hydroxide. I got ALOH3 because aluminum is plus 3, hydroxide is minus 1. Um, and then calcium sulfate, your charges are already balanced. And so those are examples for balancing chemical equations.